Hello and welcome to this training on how to be assertive at work without being rude or aggressive or a jerk. Absolutely. So let me ask you this question. Is this aggressive? Having strong opinions about whatever it is that you work in or do or even things are not in your area of expertise, disagreeing openly even from your boss or other superiors, saying no without giving an explanation, can you imagine that? Demanding your team, if you're a manager, to, to be excellent, to do amazing things, to be their best, demanding excellence from them. Selling in a very strong way, selling what it is, your vision, your views, or a product, or anything like that. Negotiating on behalf of yourself, for your own personal gain. Promoting your work, your, what you do, right? And your potential and your personal brand. Having a very loud and confident voice in a meeting, in social occasions, or anywhere where there are other people. Do you think that that is aggressive? Well, I'm going to answer that for you guys. But first of all, thank you for joining me today. And I, my name is Evna Curry. I'm the CEO and founder of AssertiveWay.com. And I'm also, I also have an MBA from INSEAD, it's the, considered the top uh, business school internationally. I'm elect, an, an electrical engineer. I've worked in many companies such as Johnson & Johnson and Etihad Airways and others in, in consulting and management consulting as well across the Middle East, the US and Brazil. I've attended a military school. I've managed several teams. I had a lot of bosses as well. And I'm also a Forbes contributor, just a little bit about me. Now, let me ask you, do you face any of these work challenges, right? Do you feel like maybe you, you know, other your boss or other colleagues at work or other people at work are not appreciating you enough or not valuing your contribution or not recognizing everything that you do for them and for the company? Do you feel like that you're quiet in situations where you, you wish you had said something, you had spoken up, you had an opinion, you had a view, or somebody treated you poorly and you did not speak up? Do you feel like sometimes you ruminate and you know, replay, you know, replay responses in your head over and over again in a loop, in a cycle, what you would have said or what you should have said or what you didn't say, and you just keep playing that terrible thing on your head over and over again? I know that that happened a lot with me in the past and it doesn't make us feel great. Do you feel conflicted between speaking up and expressing yourself and sharing your voice, um, speaking your mind, but also at the same time you want to be a decent, nice human being, a kind, nice, gentle person? Are you afraid of sounding mean, aggressive, rude when you stand up for yourself? I know it's easier to sometimes to stand up for other people. But that's why I'm asking you if you're afraid of sounding aggressive when you stand up for your own interests. Do you find it hard to ask for what you want, to ask for a promotion, for example, to ask for an increase in your salary, to ask for opportunities that you want, right? to ask to participate in certain things that you want, to ask for the training, to ask for work-life balance, to ask to leave early, to ask to use your vacation days, to ask for whatever it is that is meaningful and important to you? Do you want to feel in control over your career and time because you feel like maybe you aren't in control, that other people are controlling your career and your time and it doesn't feel that great. Do you feel like you miss out on great opportunities at work because in other people you see other people take them, you know, these great opportunities because even though sometimes you're more qualified, you have more experience, you have a lot more to share, but because you feel like others don't notice you, don't see you, you feel maybe even invisible at times and like your efforts are not being seen either. And do you feel any of these emotional challenges, right? Do you feel guilt, like guilt all the time, like guilt that you didn't say something or that you said something or that you didn't do something or that you did something based on how people judge you? Do you feel imposter syndrome? That's a common one, isn't it? Linked to low confidence. Do you feel overwhelmed that there's so much going on and you don't know how to keep everyone happy? Do you feel ashamed sometimes, right, of yourself? Do you feel stressed out? It goes with overwhelm. 
you feel frustrated with other people, with yourself, with the situation, right? Those are clear indications. And I, and listen, I've been there for a very long time. I know all those feelings and all those things I described, I felt as well. And let me tell you something. I'm going to tell you that a non-assertiveness or lacking assertiveness may be the reason for a lot of your frustrations, a lot of those negative feelings, a lot of those challenges that you encounter at work. And they certainly were for me. Now, I was very lucky because I had this boss who was also a mentor. And he taught me, Mario, Mario he was, his name was Mario. And he taught me and pushed me to be assertive every single day in a crazy way. He pushed me outside of my comfort zone to do all the things that I would never do on my own. And he forced me in, in certain instances and that taught me so much because he also guided me and showed me what to say and how to say it and how to deal with the situation. And he backed me up every single time. And I want to be able to teach you some of the things that I learned from, from Mario and then a lot of the other things that I learned as well. And I've also been teaching many people. So let's start with who is assertiveness for? Who can benefit from assertiveness? Is assertiveness for you? Well, assertiveness is going to help anyone who wants to get ahead faster, who wants to do more, who wants to be more confident, be more, lead better, be recognized, be more successful, have a greater impact, be a better leader. All of those things require assertiveness. And I'm going to go to the extent of saying that this is going to increase your happiness, your career fulfillment, your life fulfillment, right? I've learned a lot of this in my career, but I can tell you it's been serving me at all levels in my life, all my personal relationships, all relationships with random people on the street and commerce, but definitely a lot at work and in the career, in your career. So what are you going to learn in this training? I'm going to show you a few things. You're going to understand what assertiveness means and how it can help you. You can understand the triggers, what, what triggers your non-assertive behavior sometimes when you don't act assertively. What's causing it, right? What, why do you act in ways that are not helpful to you? And then I'm going to share with you, you know, what the communication styles are and help you figure out which ones that you use the most. And then I'm going to help you um, identify some of the body language elements that, that are not helping you with your confidence and with your assertiveness and your communication. And then I'm also going to share with you 20 assertiveness strategies that are going to help you speak up in a positive, kind, respectful way. So this is what we're going to talk about today. And we're going to start with the benefits of assertiveness, which are so many, it gets me so excited. First of all, it's going to help you reduce your stress tremendously because assertiveness is going to help you speak up in a kind, positive way, right? So that's going to help you be able to negotiate with people, talk to people, understand what's important to you, and reduce your stress. It's also going to help you feel more appreciated by other people because you're, you're going to communicate in a way that's going to get people to understand, recognize, and value what it is that you have to offer, right? They're going to appreciate you as a result of that. They're going to understand what you're bringing to the table, and they're going to feel appreciative of you being there. not going to take you for granted. Right? That goes with being valued. They're going to value you. You're going to feel valued because people are going to value you. They're going to say, hey, I know what you're bringing to the table. I know all the work that you're putting in because you're going to communicate in a slightly different way that is going to up the valuing factor. Obviously, with all that happening, you will feel more confident. You will feel more in control. You will feel like you own the space, not in a way that's extroverted, but you, 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 you know how to get what you want. And you know how to, more, most importantly, you know how to get what you deserve, right? Without being rude or mean or anything like that in a very kind, gentle way. And that's going to help, help you like crazy. It's also going to help because you're going to be valued. You're going to be more confident. You're also going to be more recognized. Recognized financially, recognized with promotions, recognized with prizes. And it's also going to help you be a better leader, right? The best leaders to, to move up. All the, the, the most senior, the people that I talk to, the more assertive they are, right? The people who tend to be less assertive are generally not leaders yet, or they're struggling to move up. So this is certainly going to be essential if you want to be a better leader and obviously get a promotion like we talked about. The recognition comes with getting a promotion. 
and be respected. This is so important. If you want other people to respect you, to take you seriously, to really pay attention to you and what you have to say and respect you, this is going to be phenomenal. This is going to help you. And it's also going to boost your productivity, right? Because now you're in control. You know what's important and you're going to be able to communicate that with people in the right way. It's going to help you be more authentic and find your passion, right? Because sometimes when we're not assertive, we, we do everything that other people want and we forget what it is that we want. And so this is going to reignite your passion and what it is, what it is that drives you. And it's going to help you be your best version of yourself. Be the kind of person that you are meant to be, right? Your best version without holding back from anything or anyone or any fear. It's going to help you gain influence and power in a very natural way, right? In a very positive way. It's going to help you be more authentic, be more you because you're not holding back. You're not trying to be who you aren't. You know how to speak your mind. It's going to help you feel positive and happy, right? Because when you are assertive, when you express yourself, when you let your creative side come out, when you share your feelings, your thoughts, your ideas, and you have people respond to that in a good way, you will feel more positive and happy. You'll feel more included. You'll have better work relationships. You'll more easily give and receive feedback, which, by the way, you know it's essential for growth and for good relationships. You're going to get more of what you want, whatever that is, and you're going to make better decisions because you're going to be more decisive and you're going to be, your mind is going to be uncluttered, right? You're going to know what's happening. You're going to know which path to follow because you're not going to have all these other voices intruding in your mind. So now that you know the benefits of assertiveness, let me explain to you very clearly, and people get this very wrong, it gets a really bad rap, what assertiveness actually means and is it a skill or not, right? Is assertiveness a skill? Well, let me start with this. Assertiveness is your ability to express yourself to ex and defend right? either your feelings, your needs, your rights, your desires, your goals, your dreams, your requests, anything that has to do with you in a calm, in a respectful way, without being anxious about it. This is about being 100% respectful, at the same time, 100% expressive of who you are and what you think and how you feel. Obviously, selectively, it has to make sense for you, but you're not going to hold back because you fear what other people are going to, how they're going to react. Right? Because you're going to know how to communicate in the right way, in a respectful way and in a calm way that you don't feel anxious about. It. That is assertiveness. It's about being thoughtful and respectful and kind, but not holding back, not holding back, expressing yourself fully. So that's what it is. It's firm, decisive, powerful, and, respect and respectful. Here's what assertiveness is not. Assertiveness is not being extroverted. You, an extrovert can not be assertive. I know many of them. And an introvert can be very assertive, right? Th those things are not related. They're separate. Assertiveness is not rude. By definition, it's about being respectful. So you can't be rude or aggressive or mean when you are assertive. And it's definitely not pushy either. And that's unfortunately, you know, a little bit of a bad reputation that assertiveness gets from people that don't understand what it actually means. And hey, I did not understand it for a very long time. I just had this you know, idea that maybe it wasn't a very nice thing when in fact it's essential, right? So you can absolutely be introverted and assertive at the same time. So assertiveness is a skill that really sits in between these three areas, right? It's got a lot of communic it's a communication skill, but it also has a, a bit of cognitive psychology in it. And it has a negotiation, right? Negotiation is all about influence and persuasion getting to a yes, right? Communication skills is getting your message across to other people so that they can understand what you're saying as well. And cognitive psychology is about your internal mental ideas and processes, and it's going to help you think more clearly, understand the environment around you, problem solve, be decisive, shift your ideas and your beliefs so that you can be fully you and express yourself in the best possible way, right? So the beauty, the beauty of assertiveness is that it includes all of those things and brings them Bring the best of all three so that you can get what you want and be respectful and kind and thoughtful at the same time, right? Can you see why I love this thing and why I've decided to dedicate my career to helping you develop your assertiveness? Okay, so what's the conclusion? Assertiveness is something that you can learn because it is a skill, because you can learn 
negotiation, you can learn communication skills, you can learn, you know, um, cognitive psychology. Those are things that you can learn and assertiveness you can absolutely learn. And here's the deal. You don't need to be assertive all the time. I'm sure you're picturing in your head this really difficult thing that's going to drive you nuts and it's going to make you really uncomfortable. But it's not. Especially when you learn it after it becomes a habit, it doesn't bother you at all. It's actually extremely empowering. And and if that doesn't, you know, if you feel like, oh, you know, it's very hard and I don't want to do it all the time, you don't have to be assertive all the time. You just have to be assertive occasionally, right? So when do you need to be assertive? Here are a few situations where you need to be assertive. Other than this, you're just being you, you're chilling out, you're doing your own communication style, it's not a big deal. But when you feel guilty or shameful about an, an interaction, that is when you need to think about being assertive. Or when you're feeling resentful, overwhelmed, stressed, or confused, those negative emotions, you don't want to stay in that place of negative emotions, right? If something is bothering you and that needs to be solved and assertiveness will help you deal, that, deal with that. When you lead people, and especially if, you, if there's some sort of conflict or some difficulty, of, or if you're sharing negative message, it's something difficult for people to hear, you definitely need to be assertive. Networking and speaking in public, there's an element of assertiveness there. When you feel like you're having people pleasing tendencies, you want to really please others, and just for the sake of it to get their, them to like you, well, yes, you need to be assertive here. When you want to ask for something, right? Ask other people for something that's gonna help you or your vision or your team, that's a time when you wanna be assertive. When you want to say no to other people, right? So that you can protect your time, protect your energy, protect your team's time, protect your team's energy, protect your family, protect what is meaningful and important to you, right? That is when you need to be assertive. When you're negotiating for something, for something that you believe in, for something that's right, for whatever it is that's gonna advance your cause or somebody else's cause or your goals or somebody else's goals that you align with, you need to be assertive. When you express your opinions, your feelings, your ideas, be in a meeting, be it in a situation, be in, in any, any, you know, anytime you're talking to people and you're expressing yourself or you're not expressing yourself, you gotta be assertive. When you're giving and receiving feedback, criticism and praise, compliments, negative, positive, you need to be assertive. When you feel like other people are taking advantage of you, I don't know if you've ever feel this a lot, I felt it a lot, the more, the less assertive I was, the more people took advantage of me. So you definitely, in those moments, need to be assertive so that people don't take advantage of you, right? So what's the first step to be assertive? You need to figure out what is your predominant communication style. Now let me tell you, start with this. You were born assertive, okay? However, things have changed. And maybe you learned to communicate in different ways when you were a child for different reasons. I'm going to talk a little bit about that but you were born assertive. So this is maybe the communication, this is not your communication. This is not how you are, what I'm gonna talk about. These are communication styles that you adopt nowadays a lot as an adult because you think that's what you need to do or you've been habituated to do so, but it's not necessarily the right thing for you. And I'll explain to you why. So there are four main communication types that I want you to think about and be aware of. There's the passive communication, there's the aggressive communication, there's the passive-aggressive, also known as manipulating communication, and there's assertive communication, which I just give you the definition for. So what does passive communicate, communicators do, right? They don't express themselves very much. They really want people to like and accept them for you know, who they are, or even who they are and who they're not. Like they'll, they'll change their behavior just to be accepted. They feel guilty a lot. Those feelings of guilt and resentfulness of other people and stress and overwhelm that's a very common characteristic of passive communicators because they get stressed out, they get overwhelmed. It's a lot of a lot of people want a lot of things from them, and they it's just an overload for them. They feel like a victim, like they can't change the circumstances. If things are are bad for them, people are the world is a difficult place, and there's nothing they can do about it. They fear being rejected by other people. They have very low self you know confidence. And they don't express their feelings and opinions a lot in, in meetings and in conversations in the court or in networking events. They find it really hard to make decisions on their own. They might say, you know, they might always let the, the, the other person decide what they want, what they're gonna work on, what their career should be, what they're gonna eat that night, you know, what flavor of, of food they, they're gonna take, like you know, what their laser is gonna be. 
they, they just delegate important decisions for themselves and they over justify their actions like they always like are explaining themselves over the top they say sorry for things that they shouldn't be sorry for you know like oh sorry for you know going to the bathroom or eating like it's your right to do certain things to express yourself so you don't have to say sorry for certain things avoiding criticism and feedback because it feels so painful so personal and it just stings them so hard that they just really dislike it um, they deny compliments even compliments they're like they avoid it they turn around they ignore it um, or they boomerang back and say oh no you're or you know you're great or they say you know what I I'm, a, I'm terrible you have no idea how bad I am um, they're very much people pleasers and some people will accept that and some people won't they don't ask for help when they need help they'll just struggle by themselves on their own and they don't make a lot of requests either like they don't ask for what they want sometimes they don't even know what they want very clearly is this you does this sound like you right now or in maybe in some of your interactions right I know a lot of people that struggle with this and I I can tell you I tend tended to be very passive um, in my in as a child and in my teenage years and as an early adult until I that wonderful mentor showed me the path to assertiveness and it took some time it's not like a change you see there's a lot of mindset here as well right like people um, who are on the on the passive side tend to think that they're not worthy they think oh I'm not worthy or what I have to say is not worthy or I'm less than others other people are more important you know they, they have more things to offer they might think that my happiness and my rights are not are not relevant or not important or I should always help others first or they might think bad things just happen to me all the time and that's just how it is right this oh sorry kind of for myself I don't know what to do my life is miserable but I'm, I can't do anything about it that is a bit of a passive mindset and and, the, and leads to passive communication and that's unfortunately you can you can see from here that this is not good right we do it a lot and we do it with under the excuse of being helpful and kind and reasonable and and giving and nice but we confuse these things like we we think this is being nice and this is not being nice you don't have to do this to be nice and to be giving and to be caring and to be loving and to be respectful I'm telling you this because I've been there right there's this huge confusion around passive with with you know being nice and kind and you need to disassociate those two things now on the other side there's the aggressive communicators and they do express themselves but they're very pushy and disrespectful when they do so right because they, they do control and command and their leadership style they might try to ridicule others and humiliate others so that they can feel better they might use insults and accusations to try to control people and their behaviors their condescending and their language they don't listen a lot like the passive type will always listen and will hardly speak the aggressive type will speak a lot will interrupt others like crazy and will not listen and they always want to be right They'll force their decisions on others even when it impacts other people they give very harsh criticism and not in a nice way they don't give a lot of recognition or compliments at all and they threaten and they take over conversations and you feel like they just talk all the time the mindset for them is that they need to do whatever it takes to get stuff done right do you ever think that way I you know that maybe other people need to be more they need to be tougher and that they're too sensitive to what you say that it's their problem that they're too sensitive right it's not your problem that you're too aggressive or that success is about winning and being right now here's what happens a lot we have a lot of men sometimes successful that are very aggressive and typically a lot of women tend to be passive right and I'm not saying this is always the case but this does happen a lot now let me tell you about passive aggressive communicators and I've done a lot of passive aggressiveness manipulative behavior as well and that doesn't mean you're wrong that doesn't mean you're mean that doesn't mean you're trying to hurt people it just means that you are frustrated and you don't know how to deal with it right it's it's a mix of the passive and the aggressive you are aggressive in a sense but it's highly vague and hidden and you're passive in many ways because you don't feel comfortable speaking up but you don't want to be the, you know the poor person and you want to get your way through you don't you don't you, you feel like a victim but you still want to do things about it you want to get things in your your way and that's where this subtle aggression happens so what do passive aggressive communicators do they don't express themselves directly right they're very vague and indirect 
They'll manipulate others to get what they want. And even if they don't intend to manipulate, it just happens. Like, I'm going to tell you one that I used to do, the, you know, the angry face. And a lot of people do this. You do the silent angry face. You look at someone and, and for the whole day or the whole week, you, or you disappear or you, you look angry every time they, they talk to you and they don't know why and they ask you why you don't say anything. So there's nothing, but you give them that look, right? That's passive aggressive behavior. You're being aggressive in a subtle way, uh, but you're not expressing, you're not talking about it. Feeling guilty, resentful, stress also happens with passive aggressive communicators and feeling like a victim, fearing rejection, having low confidence, all those things that passive people tend to be as well. They're vague. They over-justify their actions. They blame others. They use excuses a lot. They deny aggressions. This is a very important characteristic of passive-aggressive communicators. Somebody might come to them and say, hey, you are, you're being unreasonable here. Or you're hiding things. And they're going to say, no, I didn't do anything. I'm not, in, you know, I'm not responsible for this. So they'll deny anything that they're doing. And, but they expect people to recognize them, even though they don't say anything. You know, they expect others to recognize all of the sacrifices that they put. And they use the silent treatment, like, like, I, tell, like I shared with you. And, and then we have the assertive communicators, right? And assertive communicators are great. This is full confidence. Like, they express that confidence. They exude confidence all over the place. They respect other people and they respect themselves. They're not rude. They don't manipulate. They're very direct, very to the point. They know and they protect their boundaries, their priorities, and those of their teams, their families, whoever they care about. They're very deliberate about their own choices and what matters to them. They'll disagree with anyone openly without an issue, but in a respectful way. They have their own opinions about all sorts of things. Right? They'll listen to others, but they'll also speak up. They take responsibility for what they do or what they don't do or what they say or what they don't say. They'll give a lot of negative feedback, give a lot of positive feedback. They'll promote their work, their their conduct, who they are. Right? They'll self-promote a lot and they'll promote others and their team. And they know that that's just a healthy thing. It's not bragging. They'll ask for what they want so that they can progress their they can progress their ideas and their goals. And they feel good about themselves because things are moving ahead, you know. And and they're they'll grow and they have this very positive mindset, which I'm going to share with you in a moment. So which are you right now? Which communication style do you use the most in your professional interactions with your boss, with your employees, with your spouse, with your children, with your friends? Now, I can tell you that often when you are one of these, you are with one person, you tend to be with a lot of people. But it tends to show up stronger in some cases, in some situations, in some interactions, in some relationships. So which one is the one that happens the most for you? Now, like I said, it can change depending on who the other person is in the situation. So let me give you some of the factors that impact it. Your assertiveness style may vary with the really how close you are in the relationship. So maybe you are more or less assertive with people who are very close to you, that know you very well, that you know you know them very well, a friend, a boss, an employee. Or it might be very different with someone that you don't know, like a stranger, um, a vendor, a store clerk. And maybe it's something different in between, right, with a colleague or a client or something like that. But it also changes with, with authority, right? So maybe you don't speak up, you, you, you kind of shy away, you're passive with high authority, like a CEO or a boss, but that you're very assertive or maybe even aggressive with someone that where you are more higher authority, like an employee or um, potentially even a friend. And maybe you are something else. Maybe you're assertive with medium authority, colleague or client. So how does your, your level of communication style, right, between passive-aggressive, assertive, and passive-aggressive vary according to your relationships? Okay, now you know what assertiveness is. You know how it works. You know you can learn it. It's a skill. You know what the four communication types are. Now you need to understand the assertive mindset. There are certain beliefs that you need to incorporate in order to be more assertive, right? Because like I said, this part of it is, is cognitive psychology. So you need to adopt certain beliefs. For example, you need to believe deep inside that you deserve to be happy and that you are in charge of your own happiness and success and well-being and good fortune. You need to take agency. You need to believe that you can do this, that you're not at the whim of other people, and that you deserve 
all the good things in life. You deserve the wealth. You deserve the well, the well-being, the health, the positive relationships, and that you can achieve those things, right? Second, you need to believe that you are as good as others. You're not better or worse. You are as valuable as other people. Your opinion is as valuable as other people. Your feelings matter. Your ideas matter. Your success matters. You matter. You need to deeply believe in that, right? Number three, you need to believe that it's okay to fail. It's okay to make mistakes and it's okay to change your mind. It's okay. It's human and you can change your mind as many times as you want. You can fail. You can make mistakes. That does not make you a lesser human being, okay? You need to believe deep inside that you're free to do whatever you want and to assume the consequences, right? You are free to disobey the rules, to not do things like other people do them, to go against the grain. You are free to do whatever you want, but as long as you assume and take on the consequences of whatever it is that you do. And finally, you need to believe that your needs, your desires, and your feelings are important, are crucially important. They matter, and that people should pay attention to them. Okay, the third step to become assertive is to get the right body language. And the sort of body language is something that um, is, is, a, is also a confident body language. And it involves your posture, your eye contact, your hands, your head, and your voice. Your posture has to be open, right, arms to the side generally, a relaxed eye contact, hands that are open, visible, with the palms up, a head that is centered, not tilted to the side, right? That's passive. A voice that is conversational, calm, and firm. And I'm going to give you examples here. So the posture of passive communicators tends to be a little bit of submissive. The head is tilted or to the side or away. Hands are closed or hidden in your pocket or behind or together. Aggressive tends to be this puffy chest. You know, arms are separated from the body like bodybuilder walk. A feet are very wide apart. And the assertive is very natural, open, like you're having a conversation with a friend, you know, arms to the side, feet together, shoulder width apart. The eye contact of the passive is not there. They're looking down, they're looking up, they're looking to the side, they're not looking to the person. The aggressive is staring, right? In the eye, we can see the eyebrows, they're somewhat inverted. And the assertive, they look a lot. They're, they're not, you know, staring all the time. They, they occasionally look away. But it's normal, you know, and, and everything is it's normal. And then you have the hands of the passive. Again, it's hidden. Uh, it's closed together. They're fidgeting with something in the pockets. The hands of the aggressive is a fist uh, or the hands on the waist like a Superman position. And generally, the hands of assertive is open. The palms are open. The hands are open. It's very inviting, right, and conversational. The head of the passive might be tilted to the side or down and um, like, you know, a poor animal that's going to be surrendering to another animal. The aggressive is tilted up and has a high chin and is very centered. It's sort of a straight, centered, very proper. The voice of the passive is low volume, a bit shaky, a bit unclear. The aggressive is very loud, right? Screaming almost, very dominating. And assertive is firm, pleasant, and conversational. Passive timing right? They, they don't comment. So they'll wait until the last minute to say something. They might not say anything. And their comments are delayed and they always last. And if even if they ever speak at all, it's very common for a passive to never speak in a meeting. Like they're really uncomfortable. And they can never figure out when to speak. The aggressive is speaking all the time. Like they're taking the dominating of the, the conversation. And it sort of has optimal timing. They don't delay a thought, but they allow others to speak and they also express their minds. And their ideas. In terms of body position, the passive is a bit inclined backwards or to the side, and the aggressive is inclined forward or standing straight, and assertive tends to be an upright body and or slightly inclined forward, demonstrating that they're interested in the conversation and what's going on. The arms for the passive, they're in front of the body and they're totally closed. The aggressive is open and taking up a lot of space. Assertive is also taking up space, but not as much and they're either relaxed or below the shoulders and they're just a natural um, spaces you know space taking except if you're from certain cultures that you might take up more space but that's a different topic 
the shoulders of the passive are closed and you know towards the front kind of closing off the aggressive is very open very expansive and sort of is natural but also open right very positive posture is your body language assertive i hope it is and if not you should try to try some of those things some of those strategies so the fourth step to become assertive is to adopt the right expressions and i'm going to share with you what those are so here are some expressions of passive, aggressive, and assertive communication. So typically, uh, some of the expressions that are very common with, us, with passive communicators are hesitation related, right? So a lot of disclaimers like maybe before they say something, I think, I don't know, kind of this, I'm not sure. If it's okay with you, maybe we can do this or whatever works for you is just, you know, letting other people make the, the decisions for you perhaps that's okay that's fine everything's fine with me when it's not right they have their own opinions i don't know if this is a good idea diminishing their idea those are some passive expressions that you want to avoid none of this is helping your point none of this is helping your confidence none of this is helping you get ahead or helping people pay attention or listen or respect or value you or what you have to say so you just want to delete the stuff right just get straight to your comment and hey this is a habit you can absolutely change. Now, the aggressive communicators might say things like, forget it, or you're stupid. Do as I say, I'm right, you're wrong, or, or you know, let me tell you why you did that. So telling people what they should be saying. Uh, you're wrong, or this is how it's going to be done, or you're too sensitive. Those sort of expressions that's just demanding in a negative way, very command and control, not great, right? Because here's the difference as well. Passive uh, communicators tend to allow others to control them. Aggressive communicators try to control others, right? And assertive communicators, they don't control others. They only control themselves, but they don't let anybody control them. So you definitely want to be here. Here are some of the assertive expressions that you could use free flow. You know, could you do this? Or this is how I feel. Or I think I need, I want. You'll see a lot of I statements. Why did you do this? Could you clarify this? I understand your perspective and, and then you share your perspective. My priority is, so now you're expressing what's important to you. Those are all assertive. And now the fifth step that you need to do is to start adopting some assertive strategies. And these are gonna help you be more assertive. Now, I'm gonna share with you some of these 20 strategies that are going to be around managing your negative emotions, especially if you're passive or passive aggressive expressing yourself openly, having this genuine curiosity, which is super important for passive, passive aggressive or aggressive, and avoiding weak language, which is super important if you are passive or passive aggressive, okay? Part A, managing your negative emotions. So you need to start as a first step, understanding your negative emotions. What's going on inside of you? And make sure that you, you understand when they happen, identify them, and how do you do that? You journal. You journal what's going on. With you. Remember that we talked about some of the communication challenges at the beginning of the session? Start journaling. Okay, what are the things that you're going through? Because I th sometimes we, we're, we've gone through something so much, so often, that we don't even notice that it's happening anymore. And it's happening all the time. So you need to start journaling. Okay, what's going on? What are my challenges? What am I trying to communicate and not being able to communicate? Is there something that I want to express? And what's going on? What are the negative feelings? And then that's the second one. Identify your negative emotions. Am I feeling stressed? Am I feeling overwhelmed today? Is this meeting making me feel exhausted or devalued or not respected? Or how do I feel with this individual? This is about identifying your negative emotions and labeling them because that's going to free you up and it's going to help you gain awareness of what's really going on. And by the way, these negative emotions and these negative situations that you're journaling about are going to help you know when to be assertive, right? Remember that I told you that you don't have to be assertive all the time? Well, a lot of the times when you're feeling something bad, something feeling negative, that's not natural. That is an indication that you need to be assertive with someone or even with yourself. But first you need to know that something's off. And the best way to do that is to really gain that consciousness and a journal is a great way of doing that. Or you could talk it through with someone as well. Number three, you want to question where these negative emotions are coming from, where these negative situations are coming from, right? What's causing it? 
Is it something that you do or that you said? Or what situation is causing this, those negative emotions, negative situations? And then you want to learn how to manage your negative emotions. You need to learn understand what you need to do so that your negative emotions can be relieved. And in that moment, that might be go for a walk. That might be sipping some tea. That might be listening to certain types of music, Zen music or meditating. Or once you are ready to be assertive, definitely that's having the conversations that you need to have. But maybe it's just scheduling to have a conversation or inviting someone to lunch to have a conversation, but we'll get into that. But initially, even if it's just exercise, right, you're doing things for your own well-being, that's going to help you manage those negative emotions so that you can have a conversation without being totally overwhelmed, right, in, in, in a more calm, anxious, free way. So those are some of, the, some of the things that you can do to start managing your negative emotions, right? Just journaling your communication challenges, identifying your negative emotions, writing it down, questioning where they come from, and then using, establishing a list, put, put together a list of the things that work for you. What works for you? A lot of people that I talk to, they, they need to take a walk or take a break, right? Or to just pro, or they like to spend some time with friends or listen to music. Whatever it is for you, Make sure that you have a list and you know what to do when that happens to recharge your energy. And then part B is the curiosity. It's super important because often we make assumptions around things that are unsaid and that causes a lot of, of, of challenges and, and negativity and that's not good. But if you're curious, that won't happen. So the first thing is you want to learn how to listen actively by asking questions. Now maybe you're already very good at that. If you're aggressive, maybe you're not that great. But listening actively also means acknowledging what other people say by repeating what they said, saying it in your own words, uh, asking them you know, to confirm how they feel about the situation. Make sure that people understand that you understood how they felt or what, the, what they're going through, the struggles that they're going through. That is listening actively and even asking questions, probing further to understand more. And then you want to make sure that when they talk to you and when they give you feedback, that when they share or probe you, that you don't get defensive or, or even put blame on other people. And that is so important because we often get defensive. And, it's, and I've, I've seen it so many times, like people tell me little things that other people do and they get so defensive and they take it so personally. And I can tell you that the person sharing the whatever it is that they're sharing or saying something or giving feedback they don't even think that they're they're being aggressive or, or rude or mean and they're not but you take it very personally so you need to desensitize a little bit around that and and being the curious or right, asking questions will help you not get so defensive about it because you're you're defensive in and blame others because you're in your head you're overthinking and when you're overthinking you're not paying attention to the situation and to what the other person really is trying to tell you what they really have to say and you got to shift away from your head into what the other person is trying to convey because there's a message there and you don't understand what it is you're making assumptions right the next one is to investigate the if you get criticism criticized if you get negative feedback investigate it don't stay quiet don't run away don't hide unless you don't care about the criticism or the feedback if it's coming from your boss from a colleague or for someone that you respect you will investigate. What does that mean? You're going to ask questions. You're going to ask clarifying questions. You're going to get to the bottom of it. And it might hurt and sting in the beginning, but I can tell you it's going to hurt way less than if you go home and start ruminating over, oh my goodness, why did this person tell me this and give me this feedback? You know, I feel terrible. What do they mean? Or what did they say? What did that, what did, what did that word mean? Or what was the intention behind that? No, just, just get, it, get it out. Get it out. Clarify the whole thing on the spot. Right? Even if you feel terrible about it, but it's going to make you feel much better later and also you're going to learn, right? And then ask clarifying questions, open-ended questions. Get really good at asking clarified questions. You don't understand why somebody's behaving in a certain way, ask clarifying questions. You don't understand the criticism that they gave you, ask clarifying questions. You don't understand what they asked you to do, ask clarifying questions. You don't understand why they're not promoting you, ask clarifying questions. It's the secret. To understand what's going on in other people's head and that's gonna help you get ahead that's gonna help you get over what's 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 happening or the trouble or the conflict 
And then use and not but. And we often use the expression but this, right? Oh, you're a great person, but you failed on this, <laughs> right? That never works. Or, oh, I really love spending time with you, but your pain, like, you know, whatever you say after the but, it's just gonna be highlighted. And you don't want to use the but, you, or, oh, I agree with what you said, but, no, you don't agree. Don't say but, say and. I agree with, I like what you said about this, and I think we could also do this. What do you think, right? Use and and say, you, if you want people to engage and be more um, willing to share with you, in a positive way and if you want to come across as more of a collaborator and you know a good person use and not but and also question anybody who says should must or have because when people say you should do this or you must do this or you could not absolutely you have you have to do this or you shouldn't walk there you must not do that like they're commanding you that's not good right they're, they're trying to control your behavior based on what, what rules? Who made up those rules? Are those your rules? Are those rules institutional? Are they global? Who made those rules? Listen, you have the right to choose if you're gonna follow a rule or not and figure out first who made the rule and why they made it and who is it serving because if people are telling you you should, must have or shouldn't, mustn't, cannot, they're trying to command you and you don't wanna do that. You wanna make sure that that's a trigger that you're gonna go pay attention to those words, and if somebody says those words, you gotta question it. Because that's when you enter the negotiation area. So those are some of the skills for being curious that are gonna help you be more assertive, listen actively, don't get, don't get personal and defensive or blame others, investigate criticism when it happens, and you, you know, respect the person that's giving you the criticism, or they matter, like your boss. Ask clarifying questions to get over the confusion, anything that you don't understand and that's important to you. Use and and not but to enhance or connect to the other person when you're having a conversation so that they don't get defensive. And question anybody who tells you you should, must, have to or shouldn't, must not do something because those rules are not your rules. Part C is about expressing yourself. So important. Being assertive means expressing yourself. You need to share your intentions. You need to share what you, what's behind in your head because sometimes when you speak, you hide things, especially if you're passive or passive aggressive, you tend to hide things, hide emotions, hide thoughts, and you just come out with the, 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 the final thought or your request or something like that. And people don't understand where you're coming from. You don't understand why you're asking for work-life balance. You don't understand why you think you deserve a promotion. They don't understand why you think that, that you know, you should take a project. They don't understand why you're saying no. Sometimes expressing what's behind in your head, your motivations and your intentions is really going to help people understand you and it's going to help you be more effective in your communication. So start thinking about sharing your intentions because if you don't do that, you know what's going to happen. People are going to make assumptions about what your intentions are. And most of the time, those assumptions are going to be negative, right? If you came in late, share a little bit about what's happening to you so that people can help you. Whatever is going on in your life, you can share a little bit about your intentions so that people can understand you and help you and see you in a positive light. Sharing is good. Obviously, you gotta be thoughtful about when you share and to whom you share, but sometimes you're not sharing enough. And part of that is sharing not only your ideas in situations and meetings and in get-togethers, but your feelings and your desires. And you'll see how effective, it's so powerful when you share your feelings to change other people's behavior because it's a very good way to, to ask people to do things without pushing or blaming or pointing your finger at them. And also sharing your dreams, your goals, and your aspirations so that people can participate in what it is in your ambitions. And like I said, the feelings and your requests and saying no, and all of those things, you're gonna use I statements. I statements is so important. And when you use you statements, you end up blaming and being pushy and aggressive. And you don't wanna be aggressive. With assertiveness, you gotta be respectful and polite. And you know how to do that and express yourself at the same time? You use I statements. 
You make it all about you, especially if it's a negative thing. So when you say, you know, I feel that you, well, forget the you, I feel um, confused in this situation where uh, I, I'm not invited, I don't come to the meeting, I'm not invited to the meeting, and I don't know what, uh, you know, what, how, what to focus on. You need to use I statements to express yourself, express how you feel about a situation that you're not liking. And then you say, I'd love to be invited to these meetings going forward. And you make your request. For me, it's important to do this. I love getting, learning and continuing my personal development. And that's why I would love to have some free time every once a month on Friday afternoons for personal development, for training. Whatever it is that you want or you don't like, you need to start with I statements. And then you also want to use when, then I. So when something happens, then I feel this, then I that. When this conversation or when this meeting has too many people, then I find it hard to contribute. Right? Whatever it is, you can use the structure. Another thing is the if this happens, then this happens. So let's say you're trying to communicate consequences to someone, right? An employee, typical situation. If you, and, and here you have to be super specific, it's always about being specific. If you are doing, you know, if, if you continue to come late to work, show up late, then I will not be able to give you this positive rating and you will not get your raise, right? You want to communicate consequences before the consequences happen so that you give people an opportunity to change their behavior, which is gonna be a win-win for everybody, right? This is negotiation tactics. So when you express yourself, you gotta share your intentions. You gotta share your ideas, feelings, and desires using I statements. You can also use when, then, I, or if, then to communicate consequences. There's another form as well called, called the Dezo script, which is you describe a situation, you explain how you feel, um, you specify what you want, you make your ask, and then you talk about the outcomes, how that's going to affect you positively, or what the negative consequences are going to be. Right? That's putting it all together, you can use that script. And then finally, you want to make sure that you avoid le weak language, we talked a little bit about that. So you don't want to say sorry all the time, just do what you need to do, right? D don't say sorry for things that you shouldn't be sorry about. Sorry, I have an opinion, but you have the right to have an opinion. Just share your opinion. Don't say sorry for having an opinion. Sorry, I disagree. No, you have the right to disagree. Don't say sorry for the, having the right to say something that you're not mandating something. Don't hesitate with maybe, I'm not sure, I might be wrong. All that language that we talked about that, that of passive communication, that's no good. That's not gonna help you. That's not assertive. That's not confident. No one's going to listen to you after what you say. They're going to ignore you. You're not going to be valued, appreciated, or heard. You're going to feel invisible. Don't use those, that language. Don't over-justify. Right? Keep it short. You want to justify something that you did, a mistake, keep it to one reason. And don't overdo it. Keep it short. Because you don't want to focus your atten everybody's attention on the mistake. Let's, you want people to refocus on solutions on the future, on the good things that you contribute. Don't overemphasize the bad things that you did or that people perceive as negative because that's not in favor of anybody. It's not going to help problem solve the issue either. And you're not a bad person because you made a mistake or because something happened that, you know, it's not in accordance to other people's expectations. Complete your sentences. So common people, and I see this in meetings all the time, they start up their phrase and then they don't finish it because somebody else starts speaking and then people don't listen to you and they see that as passive and they don't respect you and they won't listen to you when you do speak next time. So complete your sentences even if nobody looks at you while you're doing it. Stand your ground, complete your sent sentence even if they ignore you, even if nobody's looking at you, finish off your sentence because you'll notice around other people finish their sentences. So finish your sentence with strength, with energy, conviction, and let it be then. And if you need to repeat, at least what that's going to guarantee is that next time people will 
that you express yourself, people will listen or are more likely to listen. Use the broken record technique. What does that mean? That means that sometimes you need to repeat certain things. If something is important and it's not getting heard, you just need to repeat yourself. And that's okay. And that's where the broken record comes from. Like if you're a salesperson, you know you got to repeat yourself over and over again. If you have employees, you, need, you know that your key messages, you need to repeat yourself over and over again. If you're a leader, you have a vision, you, can, you know you, keep, you have to repeat yourself over and over again every day. And if you have something important to say, you know that you have to keep repeating yourself over and over again. Because that's the only way sometimes it's going to stick because people are busy, people have so much going on in their heads. And if you don't repeat yourself, if you don't focus on your message, people won't listen. So don't feel bad about it. Don't feel bad about repeating yourself. Repeat yourself. You can use the same words, you can change your words, you can use a different medium, but don't worry about repeating yourself, okay? I know some, some of you might feel awkward in repeating yourself, but it's totally okay. So avoid weak language, don't say sorry all the time, don't use hesitant language like maybe, I'm not sure, I might be wrong. Don't over justify, keep it short, complete your sentences, and use the broken record technique. So those, my friends, are the 20 assertive strategies for you to get started around managing your negative emotions, building that curiosity, expressing yourself fully, and avoiding language that makes you look weak and makes people not pay attention to you. Okay, now the sixth step to become assertive is to learn what to say and how to express yourself in different assertive situations. Remember I said that you don't have to be assertive all the time? You only have to be assertive in certain moments, like when you express your feelings, opinions, and rights, when you ask for what you want, when you're promoting yourself at work and networking events without having to brag about it, you're disagreeing respectfully, when you're giving and receiving criticism and praise, when you're handling conflict and difficult people and difficult situations, when you say no politely. Now here's the thing, nobody teaches assertiveness and with the full tactics and with the mindset so that you can always feel confident about speaking your mind without anxiety. And I can tell you this because luckily I had a boss that taught me a lot of this, but most people in this site, I had 13 bosses other than that one boss, not taught anywhere. And it's really unfortunate. That's why I'm so dedicated to bringing this knowledge to all of you because there's so much more to it. And it's not just like plain vanilla communication skills, right? And sure, it's going to develop your social skills, your soft skills, your interpersonal skills. It's all of that. It's part of all of that. And it's going to help you get what you want. But these are really success skills. And I've seen a lot of really successful people say this. Say, you want to be successful, you need to be assertive, right? It's communication that's shameless in a way. You don't have to be shameful of communicating and expressing yourself fully and expressing your mind. Right? So I want you to think about claiming your voice, claiming what you deserve in this life, in your career, claiming the success that you are meant to have in a nice, positive, respectful, thoughtful way. Be it the promotion, the money, the resources, the position, the title, the team, or the project. You deserve it. And assertiveness is a powerful communication tool and a, a mindset tool for everyone. But it's incredibly essential and powerful for, for people that often get condemned for being aggressive. If somebody ever tells you often that you're aggressive, that you're pushy, then this is really going to help you, right? And often those are women in corporate environments where there's a lot of, or women leaders, where there's a lot of men or women in STEM, African Americans, a lot of Asians because there's an expectation that they're quiet and nice. Yeah, a lot of immigrants, there's an expectation that they need to follow the rules. Uh, young leaders in an environment with a lot of older leaders, right? If you are if you see yourself in a situation where people uh, label you in certain ways, then this is going to really help you like crazy, but it's going to help anyone who wants to communicate and express themselves fully. And you can change that reality. You don't need to be silent anymore. You can speak up and make sure that you are respectful, knowing that you are respectful, that you're being kind, that you're being thoughtful, that you are being fully present with other people, but at the same time you're expressing yourself, your needs, so you can get ahead, you can better lead, you can be acknowledged, you can be recognized, you can be appreciated, and all of those good things that we talked about. Now, I, I would love to answer uh, and talk a little bit more about assertiveness, things like, 
you know, how to say no politely, how to ask for what you want without being selfish and entitled, how to deal with a difficult boss, how to communicate negative things, how to get people to listen to you and how to stop people pleasing, how to get people to stop judging you, right? I know there's so many questions that come up um, around speaking up for yourself, standing up for yourself and for others, being more assertive and confident at work. And I just can't really answer all of them uh, with you uh, right now in this training. There's so much more that I want to share with you. And there's so much more that can help you grow and learn and develop. And that is why I created a course for you guys because people are asking questions like this to me all the time. Like, how do you deal with a difficult boss, right? And how do you get people to listen to you and not interrupt you all the time? And so I created this course, a course to answer all these types of questions and to give you my very best training on how to be assertive without being rude, without being mean, but doing all of those things so that you can get the career and the life that you deserve, right? And I am so passionate about this. So I told you a little bit about who I am and I've, you know, how I learned this and my experience. And remember that if you're going through any of these challenges that we talked about, right, all the guilt, the overwhelm, the low confidence, if you feel like you're, you know, you're, you're scared of speaking your mind, if you feel conflicted, um, feel underappreciated, ruminate, all those things that we talked about, right? Remember that you're not alone. You're not alone in that a lack of assertiveness might be the reason for your frustration. And I was there, like, you know, I wasn't, I was very strange looking as a young person. I got a lot of judgment. Um, people um, called me different things, like they compared me with these two people. And I had no issues necessarily. It's just that I didn't like it. And I, I felt, I was very shy and I was very quiet and I was very much a people pleaser and I wanted people to, to, to pay attention to me and to respect me. But at the same time, I was hiding all the time and I didn't know what to do and I didn't want to say, I was very nerdy. My parents would say that I was a, I walk like an orangutan. Remember when we talked about a sort of body language? Well, I definitely did not have that. Have that. I walked like an orangutan and, you know, completely folded over and my head down, I would hit walls and things all the time because I was looking at the floor and not ahead of me. I completely avoided eye contact. So I had to go through a lot and maybe you're there somewhere. Maybe you are shy. Maybe you're an introvert. Maybe you're a people pleaser. Maybe you're scared of speaking up. And I can tell you, I've been all of those things. Maybe you're socially anxious. I, c I couldn't have any conversation with any human being, right, as a teenager or young adult. So if you're there right now, know that you're not alone, that you can get past that and things can completely change in your life. Now, when I was young, at least I learned how to communicate. I knew how to communicate assertively with my little brother. I mean, probably that was the only person in the entire world that I was assertive with. But in my 20s, I, like I said, I couldn't stand eye contact. I couldn't ask questions in the classroom, right? Because I would turn red tomato um, because I would be so embarrassed. I avoided any social encounters. Um, I did everything that everybody wanted me to do it's just so I could be accepted, you know, from with adults and other people uh, or friends. I got really annoyed and frustrated because I felt like people were taking advantage of me. I'd ghost people sometimes that I didn't want to have to deal with a hard conversation. I was scared to take ask for time off. I felt like an imposter and had low self-confidence all the time. And at some point, my first big career decision was to, to take a job off. I took a job offer and then another better one came up. And it was the first day that I had to show up for this other first job offer. And I didn't have the courage to tell my boss that I had accepted a second job offer. And so I just no-showed and I didn't say anything. And then my boss called me up and, and I didn't pick up the phone. But then I sent an email saying that I had taken, taken another job. And that was a terrible way to deal with the situation. But at least... I did what I wanted and I followed my dream job that took me to an international career that got me everywhere where you know, the career and the life that I really wanted for myself. But I did it very bad. I, I was not respectful in that communication. So sometimes you try to be assertive and sometimes when you don't know how to do it right, you'll end up being aggressive, right? Or disrespectful. But when you know what you're doing, at this point in time, I had no idea what I was doing, then things will be easier and you know that you're being respectful at the same time. My second career obstacle was that I was doing 
okay at the very start of my career as an analyst, but then I got stuck very quickly, like within a year, and I couldn't get a promotion, and I couldn't get ahead, and I couldn't get bigger projects, and nothing was happening. And that's when I was assertive again, and I was able, like I said, there's a sort of moments, right? A sort of moment where I, I, I chose the right, I was able to say no to the first offer and stick with the career in the life that I really wanted that changed my life forever. The second time was when I really wanted to, be a prom to get promoted to manager and I wasn't seeing how that was going to happen. And I was assertive in my interviews with other companies. I was very assertive in telling the hiring manager that I would only take a new a job if it was to manage a team. And then that that's what they gave me. That's not what they offered me. They offered me analyst jobs. But then I would say, this is the only way I'm coming to your, to your company if I can be a manager and manage a team. And then he, they didn't even ask me why. I wanted that because I wanted to get to my MBA and um, to be admitted. And I knew that if I had management experience, it would be much easier. And I would exit the company. They, they didn't ask me. I just said, this is what I want. And that's what they gave me. So sometimes if you want something really bad, then you'll, you'll be assertive. And then I had another uh, obstacle. As a first-time manager, my team didn't respect me at all. They would yell at me. They, were, they didn't do what I, tell, I told them to do. Um, they would do interventions to try to fix me and would tell my boss that I was terrible. Um, and I had to deal with them. And I was able to turn this around. This was I turned around with the help of that amazing mentor who helped me be assertive and be assertive with my team and with customers. I'd love to tell you so much more about it, but we just don't have all the time here. And then I had another obstacle where I was so bored with my job, I felt underutilized, invisible, stuck again later in my career. And again, I had to be assertive and I had to ask my boss for the kind of job and opportunities that I really wanted. And that's when things started to change. And that's when I got a promotion. And that's when I got a new, whole new role and a whole new team that I could designate the way I wanted. And people started to see me in a positive way. And then I had another situation where my boss's boss threatened to fire me because I was reaching out and networking too much in the company and helping others. But then that led to a promotion later after almost being fired into a expansion of my team. So this is the man that really taught me assertiveness and that helped me so much, which led me to travel around the world, manage several teams, international teams, get jobs all over the place, become a huge dance fan um, and do conferences of dance, but also do uh, international MBA. Um, I had two manager positions created for me and teams created for me, present at national conferences, networked at many conferences, um, and even ask for a massive amount of loan from my boss. And listen, I would love it if you would allow me to be your mentor, just like Mario was a mentor to me for assertiveness which changed my life forever and made it so much more abundant and free-flowing and gave me the freedom and the options and the flow that I so much desired. So I brought everything that I learned together for you so I could mentor you through this and in the Confident Communication Academy. This is what I have for you today, right? It's a six-week digital program and it's going to teach you the mindset and the exact frameworks of what you can say and do in each assertive situation and moment like saying no giving and receiving criticism and praise speaking up asking for what you want dealing with conflict and here's what we're going to cover it's six weeks and each week we're going to go through one of these topics be it assertiveness more strategies more speaking up you know we're talking about influence and power and how to deal with requests and networking and meetings and saying no and setting boundaries and in praise and criticism and feedback and getting rec recognition a lot more depth into all of these topics, right? So that you can gain confidence in those important moments and conversations that matter the most in your life and in your career, so that you can do all of these things. You can advocate for yourself and for others. You can ask for promotion, for training, for resource, for team, for time off, for more flexibility so you can have time for your family and still get ahead at work. Say no to unreasonable demands. Having boundaries with your boss. Having a good relationship with your boss receiving negative feedback, giving neg negative feedback. So why would you waste a time, so much time, years, even a decade or two, trying to figure 
without these costly mistakes are going to cost you salary, they're going to cost you opportunities, they're going to cost you good relationships, they're going to cost you work-life balance. You can keep on making mistakes and just wait for life to hit you over and over again, waste many, many opportunities and then you know, try to reflect and learn from them and you may never get there without support, right? Why would you want to reinvent the wheel? You can go to the internet and spend hundreds of hours surfing for bits and pieces of information that you don't even know how to fit together and I can tell you the content, the quality of what's out there in the internet is not great around assertiveness. You can read books, right, which a lot of them are quite outdated and they're mostly written by psychologists who don't have a lot of career experience. You could go to a psychologist and hire one to help you figure things out on a one-on-one -on -one therapy that's going to cost you thousands of dollars. Or you could take this course and get the guidance from me and motivation to keep going and to have your questions answered by me. Someone who's been there in the workforce, in the corporate world, who's led teams, who's been around the world and who's gone through this, a personal transformation and who went from shy, introverted, quiet, socially anxious people pleaser to someone who is now assertive and can help you achieve the same. So save your time, your frustration, your energy, your money, your wasted potential. That's the most important thing. You got to save these things. I want to make sure it's right for you. Like I want to make 100% sure. So for whatever reason, no questions asked. If you don't like it, you have 30 days to ask for a refund and get all of your money back. And Because I just want to make sure that you are happy with this course. So here's what you're going to get. Six modules of online training with 10 plus hours of online content. And one of those modules, like I mentioned, is going to be released every week. Then you're going to also get email Q&A, right, available for you to answer your course related questions so you can keep the momentum going. A one on one call for 30 minutes to personalize your own confidence plan after you've gone through some of the trainings. We're going to also give you quizzes and reflection exercises to help you apply your knowledge in your work life so that you can get ahead. And here are some of the things. So like I mentioned, the six weeks modules of online training is going to help you know exactly what to do and what to say in each situation that you're going through, each difficult conversation with the right strategies and mindset and frameworks to succeed. It's going to help you stop feeling unsure of yourself or, or having self-doubt and, and not backing off. That's often what we do when we're scared. We back off. That's no good. We, it's, this is going to help you lean in. And feel confident in saying what it is that you mean and expressing yourself fully and thoughtfully and respectfully so that you can get what you want in your dreams. And, you know, the quizzes, summaries, reflection, exercise are also going to help you internalize and implement what you learn. And the call that we're going to have is going to help you as well. I'm going to answer your questions if you have, your specific challenges. I'm going to give you my expert opinion on, on this, whatever you're going through in that moment. You know, let me share the story. Pedro, he managed an entire team and he developed the entire system a company used. He had not gotten a promotion in six years and he felt really devalued, underrecognized, and underappreciated. He also really wanted to change his work so that he could learn something new. And he was even considering quitting and looking for a new job. And I really saw that he had so much leverage and potential. And I advised him that he make a case for his management and communicate his ambitions. He just needed a little push, so he did that, and he was promised a promotion and change in role on the spot. Can you believe that? They really valued him, he just didn't know. His leadership loved him, but didn't talk about it. And, and the thing is, they didn't feel like they needed to promote him because he never asked for anything in all those years. So he got a new role, and he transitioned from his old role to this new role, and his confidence just skyrocketed, he felt so refreshed again, and you know uh, the outlook was good again. Um, he before he was thinking about quitting, now he was super excited to stay. He was engaged, learning new things, feeling valued and and confident and recognized. And that's how what a certain this can do for you, right? Those short little conversations can help you tremendously. So the online training is three hundred in value. The call is a hundred dollars in value. That's not what I'm going to charge you today. The workbook and all of that is another $50, so all of that is $450 in value. And listen, this took me a decade to figure out. You don't want to spend, or, or do you want to spend all that time to finally feel confident and free and valued and recognized at work? 
You can enroll in this course right now and you can learn this instead of taking those years that I spent to speak up with confidence for yourself and for others and get what you deserve and not leave pay you deserve unearned. Fulfill your potential, make a greater impact in the world and have more joy in the process. And you can start doing that right now. You can absolutely start doing that right now. And let me help you just like my mentor Mario helped me. So all of this has the value of 450, but I'm not going to charge you 450 for this today, which is what I learned in a decade struggling and studying through this, right? So for today, I'm going to offer this. You can get all of this for just one payment of $197. And I want to make sure that this is right for you. So if for whatever reason you don't like it, you don't, you know, you have, you can get a full refund and got all your money back. No questions asked, because I want to make sure that you're satisfied with what you buy. So there's no risk for you. And today I'm going to give you a special discount of 25% on top of that. So you can get the, the, this program for only $147. Like I said, I was 24 and I was super shy and awkward, but I still, um, I, I, at that time I walked into an interview with a very clear objective. I wanted to manage a team and they offered a position without a team. So I confidently said no and I explained that I was looking for an opportunity where I could manage a team. I said thank you for the time and for the opportunity and I walked away feeling as confident as ever for expressing myself fully. And then three weeks later, the director called me and offered a job with a team that started off with four people and grew to 14 to 13 people in within like six months. And that's how I got my first manager role at the age of 24. Then I was admitted to my dream MBA program, but I had no money to pay for it. And I was able to secure some loans and scholarship, but I still needed a lot more. So I was feeling really nervous, but I still asked my boss for the loan so that he could, so I could leave the job really and go study to do this MBA full time. That was my dream. And I didn't want to commit to coming back to that work. So I was, it was a very bold request because I was leaving and asking for money and a lot of money. But because of the relationship that I had with my boss and the way I asked for it, he said yes and he gave me the $50,000 and the 50,000 euros that I needed so that I could go do my MBA. And, um, and he advocated with the CEO, of course, on my behalf. So he waived it, if he would waive it if I came back and worked for him for another two years. So I went off to my MBA and that changed my life forever. So assertiveness gives you the confidence to speak up when it matters. And to do so in a way that is effective, that gets results, that is not seen as selfish, and that gets other people involved with your dreams and your future and your aspirations in a very positive way. And you can learn it. You can learn this. So on top of that, you're going to get three bonus trainings. And I'm going to share with you what they are in a moment so that you can continue to develop your communication skills with the specific challenges that you have. So I'm going to give you a bonus training on a sort of body language with more details. And this is, you're going to learn, you know, body positioning, gestures, all sorts of things. You're also going to learn how to boost your confidence. This is super important because there's many types of confidence and the tactics that you need are specific for each of those. And you're going to learn how to be assertive with your boss so you can get have a good po positive working relationship with your boss. So you don't have to hold back the do's and don'ts and tactics and mindset. So you're going to get those three trainings on body language, confidence, and being assertive with your boss. So all of this for just one payment of $147. This could not be any better. This is a 25% discount from the original price, but the value of this is way more than, you know, $500. And if you buy right from now, you're going to get an extra 45 minutes one-on-one -on -one call so that we can go further and deeper into your challenges and role play the situation that you're going through. When I do this with my clients, they get breakthroughs. Like they're stuck on something. They're stuck and don't have the courage to have a conversation. After a very quick conversation, they go out there and they make huge changes in their career. They ask for what they want in the right way and they get what they want. They, I've seen people get promotions. They get respect. They get the project they want this works right sometimes you just need that helping hand and i'm here to be that helping hand for you so i can definitely be there and this may be the single most important call that you need to gain that momentum in your career again and i will give you my expert opinion and we can do all sorts of things in that call and students have said so many great things about you know my my materials and my courses like 
They feel empowered. They feel figure out what they were doing wrong. They feel better with people. They feel like they're growing and that this is effective and it's an upgrade for themselves. And they're more successful and it's supportive. And they learn a lot about themselves and it makes it feel happy and enlightened and it builds their confidence. So remember that your duty is to yourself, is greater than what you owe to others. And I want you to pay attention to that. I want you to understand that your duty to yourself is greater. And this is a way for you to honor yourself. And let me be part of it. The total value is of $700 of everything that you get, the six modules, six weeks of training with more than 10 hours of content, the workbook, quizzes, summaries, a one-on-one strategy call, and then bonus training, three bonus trainings, plus the 30-minute ass- uh, assessment call that we're going to go through, the audio downloads, and a 45-minute planning uh, and, 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 and role play call with me one-on-one so that we can go through your challenges and get them sorted. All for just one payment of $147. This is my best content that I've learned, not only through my mentor, Mario Setti, but through a lot of studying, a lot of research. And I want to share this with you because you're not gonna find this anywhere else in the market. And I wanna make sure that you have the best. You know exactly what to say in a assertive way, in the right moment, feeling confident about what you're doing, getting what you want without without having any risk, really, because you're going to say it in such a respectful way. So make sure that you take advantage of this. This is going to change and re- revolutionize your life. This is also personal development, but it's also your personal growth. This is what's going to make you feel confident, in control, get the relationships under control. You're going to use this these skills at work or in your personal life, and it's going to really change your life. It changed mine, and I only wish this for you because I know it's going to make you so successful. And I wish you to be successful and to be in control and to get everything that you dream of because you deserve it. And I hope that you can see that you deserve this. You deserve this investment in yourself because this is going to change your life. And that is why I'm making this so accessible to you. So click the button below and sign up or learn more at least about it. And I really, I can't wait to have the call with you and learn and about and serve you so that you can get ahead and get unstuck no matter where you are. Thank you so much for watching this today, for being here, and click the button below so that you can start enrolling this right now and join us for your freedom, your growth, and your development in this wonderful community. Thank you so much, and I can't wait to hear from you.